Much like ancient India, the religious foundations of Hinduism in ancient Cambodia originated among the monarchs and their loyal followers before spreading to broader society. These rulers were instrumental in the construction of the fabulous ancient monuments of ancient Cambodia, which fostered the spread of Hinduism. In addition to overseeing the construction of temples, kings actively promoted Hinduism by granting exemptions from taxation to Hinduism adherents and bestowing various privileges and immunities upon leaders of settlements who embraced the faith. The temples built by these kings served as earthly abodes for the Devarajas and gods, aligning the human state with the cosmic forces of deities capable of conferring legitimacy and power. This alignment allowed rulers to invoke religious authority and supernatural power. Notably, King Jayavarman VII, who ruled from 1182 to 1218, commissioned the construction of the Bayun, initially a Buddhist temple and one of the first that marked a new era for the Khmer people. This marked a significant shift from nearly four centuries of Shaivism to state-sponsored Buddhism. Scholars have proposed that Jayavarman's transition from Hinduism to Buddhism was a strategic move to attain political legitimacy within the context of political turmoil inside the ancient kingdom of Kambuja. As some historians have suggested, Jayavarman VII's motivation might have been to project his legitimacy through a new cosmic alignment with the Buddhas. However, Hinduism persisted alongside Buddhism throughout his reign. Jayavarman VII ascended to power in 1182 during a tumultuous period marked by Khmer factions in conflict, sustained incursions by neighboring Champa and a regicide that left the Khmer without a ruler for nearly five years. In today's video, we delve into the rise of Buddhism in early Cambodia, then known as Kombucha, embarking on another thrilling journey through the history of Southeast Asia. Before we commence, I express my gratitude for your visit today, and I hope you enjoy the upcoming video. Buddhism had thrived in Cambodia since around the 7th century. Around 650, Punyodaya, an early Indian Tantric Buddhist scholar, spent 15 years in Gen La, the early predecessor to the Khmer Empire, living among the Buddhist community there. His mission, sent by the Chinese emperor, aimed to acquire Khmer expertise in medicinal herbs. However, by the end of the 7th century, Chinese Buddhist scholar Yi Jing reported that Buddhism had entered Cambodian territory after Hinduism and prospered until a few years before his visit. He noted that the Khmer king had expelled or executed Buddhist monks. Between 665 and 791, material records reveal that no trace of Khmer Buddhist iconography, inscriptions, temples, or ashrams, suggesting some degree of state-sponsored suppression of the religion. Interestingly, this was a period of flourishing for various Buddhist sects outside Cambodia. Outside Cambodia, Mahayana Buddhism spread in various regions, including Western India, Pala India, Sri Lanka, Lanka, Tibet, Tang China, Northern Champa, and the Malay Peninsula, and most famously in Borobudur in the Srivijaya Empire. Increasingly, the ancient states of Kambuja were surrounded by Buddhism. Nevertheless, despite the suppression of Buddhism, there is much indication that the religion continued to survive among the Khmer. Some evidence suggests that Buddhism had been practiced widely among the popular classes, despite the royal and elites continuing to adhere to Shaivism. At some point, it seems Jean La had fallen under the suzerainty of the Shailendra dynasty of Java, famous for the construction of the world's largest Buddhist temple, Borobudur. Such a relationship would have ensured Buddhism's reemergence within the Khmer kingdoms of Kambuja. In 802, Jayavarman II, who ruled from 802 to 835, would reestablish Khmer control over Kambuja. He himself was said to be connected to Cambodia's earlier rulers by blood. Arriving from a place called Java around 800 CE, he set up a power base at Indrapura, likely Bante Pre Nakor, to the east of Kampong Cham. Expanding his influence across Zhenla, he moved his capital to Hariharalai near modern-day Siam Reap, and finally to Mahendra Parvata. At Mahendra Parvata, Brahman Hiranyadama performed a ritual that sanctified Jayavarman's claim as a universal king, or Kakravartin and symbolically severed his dependency on Java. 
establishing a Shaiva state in the Angkor region in 802. Jayavarman II initiated a 260-year period of monarchs erecting Shaiva state temples. This period was a golden age for Hinduism in Kambuja. At the onset of Jayavarman II's reign, Shaivism became firmly established as the royal worship of the Khmer Empire. He founded the Khmer Empire with a capital at Mahendra Parvata, or today's Panam Kulin. Evidence also suggests that Jayavarman II included Buddhists in the Khmer Alliance, formed to combat Java, asserting independence with the same power. Under Jayavarman II's rule, Buddhism experienced a resurgence in Cambodia. Evidence points to the construction of Buddhist shrines in the early 9th century, and a royal patronage supported Buddhist ashram emerged near Angkor in the late 9th century. Despite facing suppression in the 7th century, Buddhism found a reprieve under Jayavarman II. Buddhism gained further strength during the reigns of Rajendra Varman and Jayavarman V through 7th, leading to a significant period of Buddhist dominance. Particularly under Jayavarman VII, Buddhism became deeply rooted in Kambuja's royal court. To understand the shift from Hinduism to Buddhism, we must delve into Jayavarman VII's ascent to power. The transition from Hinduism to Buddhist dominance suggested a transfer of power from Brahmins to Buddhist monks, potentially causing upheaval in the kingdom, as those entrenched in the old order might resist this change. Inscriptions from the time period record a rebellion of some magnitude against the new king, Jayavarman VII. Jayavarman's father, Daran Indravarman II, ascended to the throne around 1152, but passed away eight years later. Jayavarman did not immediately secede his father, but by a close relative, Yasovarman II. Shortly after Yasovarman II ascended to the throne, Jayavarman VII was ordered to lead an expedition to Jampa, although some historians have suggested Yasovarman II exiled Jayavarman, but it's unclear which precisely. Evidence suggests that Jayavarman Jayavarman VII might have remained in Champa for the next 15 years. After Tribu Vanaditya claimed the throne of Kambuja, another rebellion unfolded in a northern state within Jampa in 1166, propelling a new monarch to the throne, Jaya Indravarman IV. Taking advantage of the vulnerability of Kambuja caused by the secession crisis, Jaya Indravarman set sights on the weakened kingdom. Bolstered by support from Dai Viet in 1170, Jaya Indravarman set his sights on invading Cambodia. He led a formidable army in to Cambodia but ultimately was repelled. In 1177, the Cham King would return by sea, navigating the Mekong and entering Ton La Sap, where he sacked Angkor Wat and vanquished the usurper Tribu Vanaditya. Following the Jam invasion and execution of Tribu Vanaditya, Jayavarman returned to Kambuja, proclaiming himself king. Engaging in a series of battles against the Jams, notably the naval conflicts depicted on the Bayun, Jayavarman successfully liberated Cambodia from Jampa's grip. Ascending to the throne, Jayavarman quelled rival factions of Khmer lords and proceeded to conquer Vijaya, a Jampa province, and other territories. During this time, Jayavarman II initiated the capital's restoration, encircling it with moats and the walls that now define present-day Angkor Dom. Jayavarman VII spent a significant portion of his early life in Jampa, immersed in Jam Buddhist culture and likely engaged in the ongoing conflicts between Jam kings and the cross-border clashes involving Jam and Khmer factions. The reliance on invoking Shiva in Angkor's defense proved futile against Jam incursions and the regicide. Consequently, Khmer defenses underwent a profound shift, replacing four centuries of state Shaivism with the protective embrace of Buddhism. Jayavarman VII seemed to have inherited a profound attachment to Buddhism from his father. Notably as well, members of Jayavarman VII's immediate household displayed a keen affinity for Buddha's teachings. His wife, Indra Devi, emerged as a prominent Buddhist patroness, renowned for surpassing philosophers in her knowledge. Indra Devi played a pivotal role in teaching nuns at three converts around Angkor Wat. Furthermore, she also converted the king's first wife, Jayara Jadevi, who was known to organize dramatic reenactments of the Jatakas, recounting the stories of the Buddha's previous lives. Under a new Buddhist cosmological vision of the world, Jayavarman's imperial vision would transcend the bounds of his predecessors. One piece of evidence for this was his preference for Sanskrit over Khmer script. He revived the use of Sanskrit in temple inscriptions and built a comprehensive road and hospital network 
network, symbolizing a Khmer-centered Buddhist-led empire reaching from the Burmese border to South China Sea. In 1190, Jayavarman would conquer Champa, establishing it as a dependency of Kombucha for the next 30 years, and around 1195 he would annex Pegu, further solidifying his far-reaching influence. Historical evidence indicates that until the 12th century, few Khmer elites embraced Buddhism. The faith, a minority at various times since the 5th century, faced suppression by Khmer kings early on in the late 7th century and struggled to survive with minimal royal patronage thereafter. The shift to Buddhism initially encountered strong opposition, particularly from Shaiva followers. Desecration of Jayavarman's temples is evident, leading to the destruction of numerous icons and dedication stelae. The Bayon Sa Buddha icons reworked into Shaiva lingas and thousands of Buddha images in Jayavarman's other temples were chiseled off. These acts are often attributed to the reign of Jayavarman VIII, who reigned from 1270 to 1295, whose posthumous title, Paramesvara Pala, signifies his allegiance to Shaiva practices. Nevertheless, Buddhism would flourish among subsequent kings of Cambodia and become state religion within the kingdom up until the present. But that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for additional historical content. Once again, I thank you for a visit and hope to see you again. Take care and goodbye.